Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation. My name is Amir Hussain Purjan from Audio Analysis Lab at Alborg University in Denmark. I'm going to present a paper I originally presented at Interest Speech Conference in August 2017 in Sweden. And the paper is entitled Dominant Distortion Classification for Pre-Processing of Vowels in Remote Biomedical Voice Analysis. After introduction and motivation for this work, I investigate the impact of different types of distortion on MFCCs. Then, motivated by the experimental observations, I propose a new method for classification of distortions in vowels. And I explain the experimental setup, discuss about the results, and end uh, with conclusions. Advances in speech signal analysis facilitate the development of uh, techniques for remote biomedical voice assessment. Uh, for example, smartphones are uh, recently being investigated as tools for measuring pathological voice because uh, they are inexpensive devices with uh, high quality microphones. But recordings from smartphones are usually subject to many linear and nonlinear distortions which affect the performance of algorithms designed to quantify the medical uh, symptoms. In uh, pathological voice analysis, vowels are widely used signals because using vowels, the complexity of modeling articulatory movement during running speech is avoided. And uh, most dysphonic speakers cannot produce steady, sustained vowel sounds. And particularly during production of vowel A, the vocal tract is more open than other vowels, resulting in minimal air pulse reflection between vocal tract and uh, vocal folds. Here we aim to detect background noise, room vibration, peak clipping, and speech coding that are commonly present during acquisition or transmission in uh, remote voice analysis. In this study, we evaluate the impact of distortions on MFCCs. These features have been selected because they are widely used in voice-based biomedical applications and uh, because they are sensitive to changes in signal characteristics due to noise, distortion, or articulatory movement. Then motivated by the experimental observations, we propose a new method to classify the type of distortion in vowels. And here we assume that if a given signal is considered as corrupted one, uh, there is a specific type of distortion which dominates over other distortions, which is uh, useful in practical applications where it's important to know whether a recording is distortion-free or needs uh, enhancement. Effects of distortions on MFCCs are complex because MFCC calculations involve uh, several nonlinear functions. And uh, the effect can be more complex when a signal is corrupted by a nonlinear distortion such as creeping or compression. Here to investigate the effect of uh, distortions on MFCCs, uh, we take uh, successive 30 millisecond long frames of vowel A uttered by 45 uh, healthy speakers. For each frame, we extract 39 acoustic features and then evaluate the change in, in the covariance matrix and the mean of the MFCCs under different types and levels of distortion. Specifically, the mean shift can be uh, measured by this equation, which is the two norm of the difference between the mean of the distorted and the clean MFCCs, average over all the speakers. The larger this value, the farther the MFCC vector is moved with respect to the clean one. And uh, the change in the covariance matrix can be quantified by this equation, which is the ratio between the trace of the covariance of distorted and uh, clean MFCCs averaged over all speakers. And delta smaller than one indicates that MFCCs are more compact in the feature space. These figures illustrate the impact of different types and levels of distortion on MFCCs. In these plots, uh, the left vertical axis represent uh, the amount of mean shift and the right vertical axis uh, represent the covariance change. The left upper plot shows the impact of different types and levels of noise on the mean and the covariance matrix of MFCCs. The plot suggests that variable noise levels shift the mean of MFCCs to different but predictable regions in the feature space. We can observe that uh, the amount of shift monotonically increases as the level of noise increases. Uh, moreover, we can also see that uh, the covariance of the, the noisy MFCCs 
is always smaller than that of the clean one. Uh, the right upper plot uh, shows the impact of room reverberation on MFCCs. We observe that the mean shift increases as uh, the reverberation time increases. Uh, we can observe that when the microphone records from a closer distance, the amount of shift is always smaller than when the microphone is recording from a larger distance. And uh, the impact of peak clipping on MFCCs is shown in uh, the left bottom plot. Uh, we observe that as the clipping level increases, the mean of MFCCs is positioned farther away from that of uh, the clean signal. And the right bottom plot shows the impact of speech compression on MFCCs. We can observe that uh, speech compression shifts the MFCCs to a farther position as the compression rate increases. On the other hand, although MFCCs of a voice signal coded at 16 kilobit per second and 9.6 kilobit per second have smaller covariance matrices compared to the covariance of the clean one, we observe a larger covariance than that of the clean MFCCs when the signal is coded at uh, 6.3 kilobit per second. Motivated by the experimental observations, we propose a new method to classify the type of distortion in vowels. Uh, using a Hamming window, uh, recordings are segmented into frames of 30 milliseconds and for each frame of a vowel, uh, which can be clean or corrupted, a 39-dimensional MFCC vector is computed. And uh, using a voice activity detection, silent frames at the beginning and uh, the end of the signal are uh, excluded. Then a multi-class support vector machine is used to classify distortion in vowels. So in this study, for background noise, we used white Gaussian, Babel, and office ambience noise at uh, three different SNR levels. For reverberation, we used eight different real room impulse responses from Aachen Impulse Responses database measured with mock-up phone in handheld and hands-free positions in four realistic indoor environments, namely an office, a lecture room, a corridor, and a stairway. And for peak clipping, we set the clipping level to 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6. And for coding, we use the kelp codec at three different bit rates. And we use the 39 MFCC features computed from frames of 30 milliseconds. And we use two different databases, uh, the Healthy Voice database, uh, which contains 93 A vowels by 45 males and uh, 48 females, and the Parkinson Voice database, which contains uh, 74 sustained A vowels uttered by 26 male and uh, 48 female speakers. And we use the support vector machine with radial basis function kernel as the classifier. The performance of the proposed system at frame level using both uh, healthy and the pathological voices are presented in this table. And assuming that the most dominant distortion in a signal usually affects the majority of uh, frames, we can extend the proposed method to the recording level by applying a majority voting algorithm over all frames of a signal. And here we can see the performance of system at recording level. Uh, the obtained results show the effectiveness of MFCCs in distortion classification, particularly for noisy frames. And the results for healthy voices are consistent with the behavior of MFCCs in the presence of different types and levels of distortion observed in uh, slide eight, uh, which I'm uh, presenting it Again, so here we can see that MFCCs of the coded signals are on average positioned closer to the MFCCs of the clean signals, while noise, clipping, and reverberation shift the MFCCs farther away from the position of clean MFCCs. Uh, in addition, the covariance of uh, MFCCs extracted from coded signals is comparable to, the, to that of uh, the clean signal, while the MFCCs for noisy, reverberant, and clipped signals are more uh, compact in the feature space. And uh, by considering these two observations, the MFCCs of the coded and clean frames are more likely to be overlapping in the feature space, which results in uh, misclassification, and particularly when there is a speaker variability in data. So, although the proposed method is effective in distortion classification for both healthy and pathological voices, we observe a degradation in overall classification performance 
when the system is evaluated using the Parkinson voice database and particularly for clean frame detection. In addition, considering that the recordings in the Parkinson voice database have been collected over the telephone, these signals uh, may have already been through one or more codecs, which means that some coded frames have been presented to the classifier as clean ones during the training phase, which will result in some classification performance degradation. Well, in this study, we investigated uh, the impact of four major types of uh, distortion on MFCCs, and we observed through the experimental analysis that different types and levels of distortion result in uh, predictable change in mean and covariance matrix of uh, the MFCCs. And based on the observations, we proposed a new approach involving MFCCs and uh, support vector machine for distortion classification in vowels. And the experimental results using healthy and Parkinson voices show the effectiveness of the proposed system in distortion classification in vowels. Thank you for your attention.